Hello, I'm Jamie, Developer Advocate here at Graph CMS. In this short video, I'd like to walk you through our Swag Store example that is built on top of Graph CMS and a variety of other APIs. Now, simply what we have here is a storefront for our products that is built with Gatsby and React. Our products are sourced from Printful and then enhanced with data from Graph CMS. So let's take a quick look at what the schema looks like for these products and where that data comes from. So what we have here inside of Graph CMS is our product model. The product model specifies a few things that are important to us for the front end. We have a description, a name, a printful, product ID, and some relations. If we take a look at this name and description, you'll see that both of these have the localization feature enabled. This means on the front end, we can toggle between any type of language. And in this case, we have English and German. And I'll show you what that looks like on the front end in just a second. But what's important to remember here is we don't have anything like prices or images because all of that data is brought from another API. And that is Printful. If you haven't heard of Printful, Printful is a drop shipping API and it allows us to upload our logo and select which products we'd like to sell and create templates for that product. So that's what we've done for the swag store. We have a selection of products that we've created, uploaded our logo, and we've specified what types of variations people can buy. It's also inside of Printful where we would assign a price for the product. And that price is then fed to the front end through a query and it will build a static website. So heading back to the swag store, let's take a look at this long sleeve t-shirt. Here we have a product image, a product title, price, and a description. Below what we can do is select a variation. And for example, if we wanted to choose a different color, we could choose that and we could add that to the cart. Those have been added to the cart and we will we'll explore what that looks like in just a second. But up in the top right, what we can do is we can switch this to German. And using the localization API inside of Graph CMS, on the front end, we're able to flip between the two different locales. So not only do we update the title and description, we also upload the path for the product. So if we were sharing this URL with someone else that was a friend, they would get that same locale. Further down, we have our customer reviews. We store all of the review information, and these are our Gravatar. And we use some enhancements inside of Gatsby to enrich the data that comes from Graph CMS. But in this example, all we're doing is taking information that is passed to us from these fields, and then we're passing them on to Graph CMS. And once this information is filled out, we can submit it and this will then be sent to Graph CMS. Now, if I refresh this page, there is no review shown that I've just submitted, and that's because the review that we submit is saved in a draft status. Now in the header, you will see that we have a few links. Hoodies, t-shirts, and accessories are all categories. Then if we click new in, you'll see that this is a collection. And really what we're doing is we're using Graph CMS to group our products into categories and collections. And this just demonstrates how you can create a custom schema to really organize your catalog in the way that you want. Now inside of the Graph CMS content editor, you'll see that we have our three categories and our one single collection. If we edit this collection, you'll see that we're able to specify the name in English and German. We're able to define the slug, a description, and we're also able to edit, add, and remove any of the products that are inside of that collection. And the same goes for our categories as well. Now back on the front end, if we head to the product page and we select a different style, all of this information is fed to us from Printful. And all of this information is queried at build time in output static pages. If we add this to the cart and we head to the cart, you'll see that we have our products in here. We have two of the long sleeve tees and one of the snapback caps. If we decrease the quantity that we would like on the t-shirt, you'll see that this updates and all of this happens on the client side. You may choose to incorporate another e-commerce API that handles shopping carts to manage this logic, but for demonstration purposes, we've just created all of this client side. Now, if we head to the checkout, you'll see that we can see a summary of our products and then we can enter our shipping information. Now that we've completed our shipping information, we can choose to use a different building address or we could use the shipping as our building address. And now we'll move on to the payment input. This payment input is provided by Stripe Elements. So we're using a React library that takes care of all of the security around generating a token for our card and handling that securely. That's all provided to us by Stripe and we don't have to deal with any of that ourselves. 
Now, there are two card numbers here, and you could use any test card number that Stripe gives you. Uh, no money will be taken. This is all just provided by Stripe, so you can test what this looks like in development. So we have two cards, the first card number, 4242. That will just accept the order and show you the success screen straight away. Or the second number, that will challenge you with strong customer authentication. So if we click pay for order, this will process the order, this will send information to Stripe, and it will determine whether it needs to challenge you. And if it does, it will pop up a verified by Visa or MasterCard screen and ask you to input some further information. For development purposes, we can fail or complete this process. So let's click complete. So now that we have a successful order, let's have a quick look what happened. We created an order instead of Graph CMS that was all taken care of from the front end that called a custom GraphQL API that was able to call the Graph CMS Mutations API to create an order. It included our name, email, the total and our order items, and our billing and shipping addresses. We're able to edit or update any of these as and when required, but most importantly, we can also see that the order was created inside of Printful. This is saved as a draft for demonstration purposes, but if this was a real order and money had actually gone through the system, Stripe would notify Printful that the payment was successful. And that happens with a webhook that is attached to Stripe and Printful. Once this order has been notified as successfully paid, this would automatically be confirmed. And then Printful would take care of the fulfillment. Once the fulfillment has been taken place, Printful then fire a webhook back to Graph CMS and it would update this field to fulfilled. Once this is fulfilled, we will then send an email through the popular Postmark API and it will tell the customer that their order is on the way. So there's a few things going on in this example and I would encourage you to dive into the code to really explore what is going on under the hood. If you've got any questions or you'd like to arrange a demo on how this works, please reach out and I'll be happy to walk you through all the dynamics that are going on here. But hopefully this gives you a great idea of how you can use a headless CMS to really enhance your product, no matter if it is an e-commerce, website or any other.